How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video I'm going to walk you through step by step how to create a USPS click and ship postage label from your house. That way you don't have to stand in line at the post office. You don't have to waste your time. It's just a lot easier when you buy it at home. You can stick the label on the package, put it in your mailbox if it fits. You can give it to a post worker if you see them out and about and you can schedule a pickup with them. You can also drop it off at a post office on the counter without having to wait in line. A lot of the times you'll see packages on the counter. That's because people purchase their shipping beforehand, either through click and ship or through a platform that they sell on maybe eBay or Amazon or Etsy. And you can and also put it in like a little mailbox at the post office also if you have one of those. So you can get it to them lots of different ways. Even though it's made by the post office, click and ship is not the cheapest way to get shipping, unfortunately. From my experience, I really enjoy this service called Pirate Ship. If you are interested in checking out Pirate Ship, I would say uh, definitely check out that video. I'll put a link to that in the corner as well in the description. You'll get a little bit better rates. The interface, it has a lot more features, but if you're somebody that already has a USPS account, Account and you don't ship that often, maybe once a month or a couple times a year. If the savings is negligible to you and you don't want to create another account, then you could just use Click and Shift. Before we get into this tutorial, if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. Buckle up. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of things to go over when it comes to postage. I will put an index and a timestamp in the description. So if you want to skip ahead to something or you just want to see a certain part of the video, make sure to check that out. But with all that being said, let's get into the tutorial and get our shipping purchased and the, our package on its way to the post office. Right smack dab here in the face, we see a click and ship uh, icon. We can click there or you can go up here to mail and ship and click on click and ship. It's going to ask you to sign in if you already have an account. Type in your stuff, get in. If you don't already have an account, click sign up now, fill all that up, and then type in your new user account and password, and then click sign in. So this is our click and ship interface. Before we actually create our label, we're gonna go through these other tabs really quick so you can see what they do. And So if you wanna change any settings, you know where to go. First, preference right here, package options. If you only ship medium flat rate boxes, or you're only shipping padded envelopes, or if you're shipping the same product over and over again, you know your weight in pounds and ounces, and you can save that. Or if you're shipping the same box over and over again, you can save that. It's gonna save you a step when we're actually creating the label. And that's why they throw that in there. But in my case, I don't ship very often with Click and Ship. And I'll tell you guys why at the end of the video. But that is um, but that is how you can save yourself an extra step in the future. So here, shipment notifications. Do you want USPS tracking notifications for everything that you ship? You can get email or text. You can check those boxes and hit save or turn them off if you don't want them. Do you wanna notify the recipient of shipping? So uh, you can automatically notify them. You can include a default message like thank you or whatever. It will send it to their email if you have their email filled out when you're shipping their package. Otherwise it would not be able to contact them anyway. Over here in print preferences, you can print one label per page with a receipt or you can save a little bit of paper and print two labels per page so it'll just be a half sheet. Unfortunately, Click and Ship does not have four by six. I don't know why they don't have four by six, but they don't. However, there is a workaround that I will show you guys later on in the video how to print a four by six label using USPS Click and Ship. But for right now, I'm going to do print labels without a receipt because I don't want to waste any extra paper. So even if I print one label, it'll just be a half sheet and then a blank other half that I could use for something else. Reference number, this is something that you can use for your own reference, uh, maybe to keep track of something, I really don't know. Uh, I've never used this feature. Return address, that's gonna be your return address. You can edit or delete it, pretty self-explanatory. And you can set an alternative zip code to appear when you select ship from another zip code. So I guess this will save yourself a step if you edit it in here. If you have a PO box that's in a different zip code than where you live, you could have your return address be that zip code, but you could do your ship from zip code just to keep it calculating correctly via zip codes. Or maybe you're traveling and you want to keep the same return address, but you're just shipping from a different state. You can change your zip code. We're going to go over to shipping history. I don't have any shipping history because I don't use USPS click and ship, which we'll get into why later on in the video. But 
This is where you would print your label again if for some reason you're, you sent a signal to your printer and your printer, I don't know, choked on it and didn't print it out or you made a mistake and you want to cancel the label. This is where you would do that. It would pop up right here. You could check it, print the labels again, or you could refund the label or you could accidentally refund the label and then cancel the refund, doing it that way by checking the box, uh, picking what you want from this dropdown, and then clicking proceed. You can also search by transaction number, label number, and you can search by the date as well if you know that. Address book, this is basically the place where USPS can save your contacts. You can add them manually right here by clicking add a contact, filling out that information, then hitting save. You can do a quick add where you put the name and then the address and information in this format in this box right here. And you can also import using a CSV file, which is a, an Excel document that uh, you could bulk type out, out and then upload it to USPS this way in order to put in a bunch of contacts. Or maybe you have a contacts file already in Excel. You just would have to save it as into a CSV in their format and then upload it right here. And whenever you import contacts, you can create a group name for them. For instance, if it's people from work, you have that contacts. We're gonna have to go back to create a label because uh, as soon as we go to address book, we get rid of these little tabs right here. So now that we've gone through the preferences, shipping history and address book, we're going to actually create the label, which is probably what you came here for. So where are we sending it from? Make sure your return address, all this information is correct. Mine's blurred out just for privacy purposes. You saw in preferences, you could turn on and off tracking notifications. You can also change that right here. If you're shipping from another zip code, do it right here for this specific label. So where are we sending it to? You can type everything in by hand right here where you're shipping it, or you could use your address book. And I am shipping it to my brother-in-law. So I have him in my address book right there. It's a little bit faster way to import it. I encourage you to save some contacts if you're gonna be shipping to them every week, every month, or a couple times a year. It would save you the hassle of having to type it in. If it's a new contact, you can click save this to my address book right there. And you wouldn't have to type it in next time. You could just do a drop down from the address book in order to save that address. If you're doing multiple packages that are the same weight, the same dimensions to different addresses, you can do a batch order right here. I'm just shipping one package, so I'm not gonna be using that. You're gonna choose your shipping date. I'm gonna be shipping that today. Uh, I've heard that some post offices are sticklers about this, that if, if the shipping date isn't correct, they will make you go home and fix your postage. I have personally never had that happen, but I've heard stories that some people's post offices do do that. So try to get it to the post office the same day that you pick your shipping date. I don't think, I don't think it's a huge deal, but I have heard some weird stories about some disgruntled post workers. So here we're going to enter your package details. This is very important to get accurate because you could end up not paying the correct amount for the postage and the post office could catch it and charge the recipient extra uh, upon arrival, which would be a pain for a customer or for a family member if you're sending them something. If you're shipping flat rate, you're gonna check this box. That's if you're using the flat rate envelopes or using the flat rate boxes that USPS provides. You can order those for free online. Uh, you can go into a lot of post offices and get them for free from their, the little kiosk that they have there. But if you're not using their flat rate packaging, you're gonna have to type in the pounds and ounces. You do want this to be pretty accurate. You do want this to be pretty accurate. I always round up to the next ounce. If I get a fraction of an ounce, you don't really round down. Package has a dimension over 12 inches. You would check this box and type in the length, width, and height right there. If it's not a standard rectangular box, you'll check this and then you'll measure the girth, which is the girth is the measurement around the thickest part of the parcel. So, and when you're not using flat rate, you can use any box that you want. You can use brown boxes, you can use recycled boxes, you can use Amazon Prime mailing envelopes, you can reuse cycle, all that stuff. 
You just have to make sure that your weight is right. And in order to get the weight correct, I do recommend that you get a scale. This is the one that I have. It's an Accutech 50 pound scale. I've never had a problem with it and they're very cheap. It'll pay for itself in correct postage. You'll get normally a cheaper rate if you do your own weight rather than flat rate, especially if it's a small parcel. I will put a link to that scale in the description if you are interested. The next section, it asks for package value. So this is if you're going to want extra insurance, which I'll show you in a little bit. So down here, they have these little check marks that let you know that you did everything and I Still haven't put in my package details. So I'm going to go up here and type in uh, and check. I'm using flat rate shipping. And then it checks that and it lets me know that I can now go to my next service. Uh, it asks if you're plan to ship live animals, go to your local post office. That's, I guess, if you're mailing like fish or, or crickets or something. I don't know. I, we're not going to be mailing anything, any live animals. So we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to go here and click next. And here are our options now. It said we were gonna be using flat rate, so it pops up with all of our flat rate options and the different rates for it. And I'm just gonna be using a flat rate envelope. I'm mailing a document. It's, uh, it says it's a three-day delivery, which is fine. Uh, if you went to Priority Mail Express, you would see that it says it's supposed to get there tomorrow, because today's Tuesday, so that would be more expensive, but we're guaranteed the next day. And then first class, it's not eligible because I have flat rate checked. Example purposes, I was shipping something weighing four ounces. Now we can recalculate and get our first class rate, which would only be $4. Uh, you can see that it's cheaper right there, but we're actually gonna be using priority. So I'll go back to that. You scroll down, priority covers up to $50 of insurance per package. Priority Mail Express gives you $100 of insurance per package. So that's another difference between the two of those. If you wanted extra insurance, you would type in whatever the value was here and then hit next again. And it gives you the options to add insurance on. So now this would be insured for $150 for an extra $3.55. I'm just doing that to show you I'm not buying extra insurance on this document. But here's the signature services here. If you want to know more information about them, hit this little I right here. I'll give you a little blurb about it. I usually just do signature confirmation if it's something that I want to make sure doesn't sit on a porch. Uh, I'll usually do signature confirmation on it, but for this, I do not need to do that. I'm not buying this extra insurance. I was just using it to show you guys for demonstration purposes. But once you scroll down, it gives you like a little summary. You do priority mail, flat rate envelope. I have a free $50 insurance. Total is going to be $7.75. I'm going to add this to my cart. It gives you another little summary. We're going to go next. You can use a credit card. You can use this. I'm not sure what that is exactly or you can use PayPal. I'm actually going to use PayPal and then check this box saying that uh, compliant with all of the rules and regulations. I'm gonna hit pay and print. I'm gonna sign into my PayPal. It gives me a summary of the transaction. I can print my label using this print icon right here. As you can see, it's formatted for two labels, so it's gonna save me half a piece of paper that I could use to print another label. Or if I had two labels that I needed to print, I could print it two on one sheet and just cut it down the middle. But there is a Chrome extension by Rolo, and you have to download that. I will put a link to that in the description. You have to create an account. You can click on this right here, and it will convert that PDF into a four by six which looks like this. It's formatted for thermal label printers that print faster than normal printers uh, using thermal labels. That's uh, one way to work around that, but I'm gonna send that to my thermal printer and that's kind of how you can use that as a workaround to print a four by six. Otherwise you just have to print with a normal printer. If down here, if you wanna schedule a pickup, you can do that. Let USPS know where you're gonna be at what time and they come and get the packages from you. If you wanna create a scan form, you don't need to do this unless you have a ton of packages and they then that way USPS only has to scan one form basically for all of those packages and saying that they have received it. You can go over here to scan form and do that. 
But for people that are just printing like one or two labels, it's not going to be really necessary. So I said earlier that it's not what I use. It's not the best way to do it or the best way to get rates. And I want to show you guys really quick why. I do have a video showing everything about this other service called Pirate Ship. I'm not affiliated with them. I just use them because of their integrations, because of their discounts, because of their interface. It's very flexible. It's got a lot more options than Click and Ship. And it's just a better way to buy more shipping. There's just a lot of better features. I will make a video eventually maybe comparing them directly, but I do encourage you to watch this video if you're if you're looking more to purchase shipping frequently for a business. Um, you're going to be mailing a lot of packages. If you want some deeper discounts, I recommend checking out this video. I'll put a link to it in the description. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. I have the same uh, package, the flat rate envelope, going to the same place, and it is $7.15 but it was $7.75 is what I paid from USPS just to make this tutorial for you guys. you think that USPS, being the post office, would have the best rates for themselves, but they actually pass those rates on to third-party companies to build better software than what USPS has to offer. Like I said, I do encourage you to check out the Pirate Ship video. If anything, it will expose you more to the shipping world and what is really out there. So that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to take my label, put it on my package, seal my package up. But I do thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about shipping or about click and ship or about Pirate Ship in general, put them in the comment section uh, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.